Oke. Okay. Hello. Oke, okay. sorry. I want to begin with a question uh, to everybody. Do you like to be surprised? How many of you like surprises? Yeah? I guess the answer depends, right? On what kind of a surprise it is. I guess there are times when we receive good and pleasant surprises. Somebody gives you a gift. You get a promotion. You know, there's a salary increase or... Your crush says yes, right? And uh, somebody uh, gives you a surprise birthday party. Remember, uh, many years ago, my wife planned a surprise birthday party for me. And what happened was I went back a bit early. <laughs> so when I got there, <laughs> there they were preparing for the birthday party. So I was surprised a bit early. And my wife was surprised too, okay? <laughs> Now, pleasant surprises, that's cool. We like that, right? On the other hand, the not-so-pleasant surprises, well, we don't like that, right? Maybe there's a business failure or you lost a job or, or you, you hear about the passing away of a friend. Unexpected surprises, um, we don't really like that. But no matter what surprises comes our way, it's how we respond, respond that matters, right? Ultimately, as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, how we respond to the things that happen to us in life um, is ultimately what matters because we want to glorify Jesus. Now, this week, I received a surprise. <laughs> Many of you know, I think you already know, that we're moving to buy hotel. But we got this notice from the owner of the building that uh, our stay here in Adnama is only up to October 15. And because they're going to be leasing this floor as well as the next floor for business purposes. And it was totally unexpected for me. Now, surprise is an understatement, more like a shock, actually. Uh, at first, my feelings got the better of me. Sudden sense of overwhelm. Suddenly, I didn't know where we're heading. The road ahead is unclear. And I had to remind myself again and again within the week, you know, I had to remind myself God has a plan. The Lord has gone ahead of us, and He is not surprised. Amen? And some of you who came here today, you were surprised because you found out, huh, we're moving the eye. Now, I did not complain. I did not ask the why questions. Now, I, in fact, I've been telling the elders way before this actually happened how thankful we should be for God to allow the owners of this building for us to stay here. In the last four years, we've been staying in this place rent-free. God has been gracious to us, and we are so thankful. We have no reason to complain. It has been a great blessing. Of course, one of the questions that bothered me, quote-unquote, was how could we find a new place in such a short notice? And how will the congregation Take it. Not about a mission culmination, and everybody's gonna be thinking how oh, we're moving, and then nobody's gonna listen to our guest, right? But even that, the Lord took care of it. You know, within this week from Monday, we received the notice on Monday. You know, we, we had people who went and scoured the place, canvassed uh, the different locations, different venues within the place, and mostly they were very expensive or unavailable. Mostly expensive, actually. But uh, by Friday, the Lord uh, allowed for us to be able to go and find a... Uh, we were given a very reasonable rate at Buy Hotel. And so, cut the long story short, God took care of that as well. So, question is, what's God up to? What's he, what is He up to? Right? Some of you might say, you know, I, I heard some people say, you know what? God has something greater in store for us. And my answer is, amen. Maybe, right? Maybe God has something in store for us. The other people say, you know, God just wants us to check our hearts and our motives. And I say amen to that as well. Yes, we need to. Not just because we have been uprooted from this place, but because God wants us to be holy, right? So some people say, you know, God just wants us to trust Him. And I say amen to that as well. But we do need to trust Him every day 
of our lives so that we will grow in our relationship and in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the question comes back, so what is God up to? And my answer to you is, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what will happen when we move to buy hotel. I don't know what's going to happen in 2020. You know, I was preparing, you know, we've been planning for this sermon series for, for quite a while. And this mission series has been a very important part uh, of the plans that we had for this church for this year. And as I was preparing the sermon series, uh, of course, the message for this week, this thing happened. So, you know, I got overwhelmed. <laughs> I didn't know what I was thinking. Lord, what do you want me to say to the people? What do you want to say to your church? And, and Friday came. I was, uh, I was actually in a coffee shop. I was reading and I heard the news that we got a good, uh, a very reasonable rate from Buy Hotel. And when I was reading, uh, when I was hearing that, uh, that call, I was actually reading from the book of Joshua. I was looking at Joshua chapter 4. And if you're familiar with Joshua, uh, this, particular, this particular story, it's, it's about the time when the Israelites were about to enter the promised land. Behind them were 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Before them was the promised land. And God had a message for the Israelites at that time. And I believe he has a message for us as well. He tells the Israelites and to us that we need to look back. To look back and remember his faithfulness and to worship him. But we need to look forward as well. We need to move forward because we have a mission. That's why we have entitled the message, Looking Back and Moving Forward. So let's look at that. I want to talk about the looking back. And I want to, talk, I want to ask our, our guest this morning to tell us about the moving forward. So looking back, what does it mean? It means that we need to remember something. God wants us to look back so that we can remember something. Because we all forget from time to time, diba? Right? In many instances, we need to be reminded by someone or we even come up with some kind of ways to, rem to remind ourselves. We, we use alarm clocks. We, we have somebody tell us, please remind me, okay? Now, uh, in Joshua chapter 4, quick context here. Again, 40 years wandering in the wilderness. Moses had died. Joshua was chosen to succeed Moses. And there now... You know, going into the promised land. So what separated them from the promised land was the Jordan River. Okay, the promised land right in front of them, but there's this Jordan River. Now in Joshua chapter 3, the end part, something incredible happens. Um, God opens up the Jordan River and the Israelites walk across the river on dry ground. It was like the crossing of the Red Sea. And so in Joshua chapter 4, we read an instruction. Um, open your Bibles to Joshua chapter 4. You can look at this, um, um, this, the slides here. Joshua chapter 4 verse 1 uh, to 7. It reads, When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, and this is his instruction, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, right where the priest stood, and to carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Remember, the Jordan was dry this time. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder. That means it's a big stone. According to the number of tribes of the Israelites. So you get the picture, right? So here, the, the, the river was, was dry. And the first thing that God instructs the Israelites was to get... The 12 tribes, representative from the 12 tribes, to get one stone each. And the stones were to be set up in a place called Gilgal. You will see that in verse 20, where God wants them to set up a memorial. 
Okay, a memorial is just something that is established, a place or something, maybe an altar, to, uh, just to rem- as a kind of a reminder of something. And um, the question is, did they really need to be reminded of this event? Because, I mean, you know, how many of you will forget seeing the Jordan River part before your very eyes and crossing on dry ground? Diba? Who would forget that? You know what? The Israelites did. And we would. That is why God says to make a memorial, verse 6, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So God was telling them, I want you to remember this day. When I opened the Jordan River, I want you to remember what I have done. This is for you to remember and for the future generations. If they're going to ask you what happened on that day, you're going to tell them, God opened the Jordan and we walked on dry land. Now, for a lot of us today, you might need to be uh, reminded of that as well. Rem- for a, we as a church, those of you who are here, um, who's been with us for four years, you remember how we started, right? Um, we started with nothing. We, we started without a place. I remember during the first, very first meeting that we had, I, I, I told the group, you know, I, I think we should go to NRA, but the problem is we don't know where. NRA meant at that time no return address because, oh my claro, right? But God moved. God moved in a very, very special way. He provided us this place, this place. Dr. Manny Hines is actually here. God used him as an instrument to bring us to this place. And praise God for that, no? And some of us today need to be reminded that we serve a powerful and faithful God. There are those of you who are sick today, or those of you who are caring for the sick, those of you who lost your jobs, or those of you whose jobs are tough, those of you who are discouraged, those of you who are depressed. Listen, life is tough. But God is good, amen? Life is tough, but God is faithful. Life is tough, but we have a powerful God, and we need to remember that. And God wants us to remember that. Let me share to you a quick testimony. I was reading through Joshua chapter 4. I was looking at verse 19. Verse 19 says, On the tenth day of the first month, The people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the 12 stones they had taken out of the Jordan. If you're a Bible student, you will realize that you'll probably ask, why does the author, probably Joshua here, why does he specifically mention the 10th day of the first month? Why would he mention that? Was it for historical uh, purposes? Well, actually, the 10th day of the first month represents that it was just a few days before the Passover. Because the Passover is, I think, somewhere the 15th day of the first month. Now, And you know what the Passover is, right? The Passover is a celebration that God had institu- instituted with the Israelites to remind them of what happened when they were led out of bondage from Egypt, diba? Now, here's the thing. Here's the interesting thing. Scholars piece together the timeline to tell us that exactly 40 years ago, the Passover was instituted, and on this particular day, when they set up these stones at Gilgal, 40 years had passed. Now, those of you who are familiar with the story, the reason why the Israelites did not enter the promised land right away, it was because of their unbelief. Now, I don't want to go into that. But basically, God said, because you did not believe me, you're going to be in the wilderness for 40 years. 
And so when you read verse 19 and 20, that it says the 10th day of the first month, the author is not simply telling us that this was a random day. God is fulfilling his promise and his purposes for the nation of Israel. God was telling them, and he's telling us, see my hand. I have brought you out of Egypt. I am bringing you out into the promised land. I said 40 years. It's 40 years. You know why that struck me? Because we're supposed to celebrate our anniversary this month. Four years anniversary. And when I checked out my records, I found out that in October 18 of 2015, we launched, officially launched Living Word NRA. And in October 20, 2019, we're going to be moving to buy hotel. Exactly four years. Now, when I saw that, when, but actually God just led me to that. I was just in tears. Uh, no special reason for meaning for four years, not or the place where we're going to. But one thing God spoke to my heart. He was just telling me, and He's telling us, "I led you to this place, and I'm leading you out of here. Trust me, I am faithful. I have a plan. God is in control. Amen." When God intervenes in our world, he does so with a purpose. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Remember what he has done. Here's the thing. Okay. We know the story does not end there. Okay. Because God was telling the Israelites, these 12 stones, hello, test, mic test. Hello, do I need to use the wireless? Can you hear me? Okay, God was telling the Israelites, I want you to set up these 12 stones as a memorial to remember, for you to remember to look back. But you're not staying there. And living with NRA, As we look back to the faithfulness of God, God is also telling us, yes, remember my faithfulness, but there's something ahead. We need to move forward. So that's the second point. You know, we don't remember the great works of God so that we can sit down and be comfortable, right? We use that, we remember that as a point of faith so that we can trust God for greater things, for mightier works in the future because we have seen and experienced his faithfulness. When you look at Joshua chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, here's what it says. The men of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh crossed over, armed in front of the Israelites as Moses had directed them. About 40,000 armed for battle crossed over before the Lord to the plains of Jericho for war. Now, why does the author again give us this detail? Because he's telling us, yes, we are moving into the promised land, but there is work to be done. There's a land to conquer. There's a mission to accomplish. And that is the message that I want to bring to you this morning. Yes, we are moving out of Adnama. We're going to buy a hotel. We don't know what's going to happen. A new, a new place, a new season of our lives as a church. But here's the thing. There's work to be done. God has given us a mission. There are further battles. And we have in the last three weeks talked about the mission that God has for us in this sermon series. The great Commission. Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations, right? Last week, we, we talked about um, how we can do that within our circles, right? Uh, the emphasis was on the circle of influence that we have. We, 
heard some testimonies by our very own brethren from this church on, on how they have been doing that. And those examples showed to us, they were varied. It's from inviting somebody to church, to, to sharing Jesus in the workplace, to, to using times of leisure like basketball to share the gospel. The point was to show all of us that the Great Commission was not an impossible task. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 actually gives us that pattern. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. What? In Jerusalem, beginning with Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Notice, Jerusalem actually represents our circles, people around us. But God says, it's beyond that. We have a Judea and a Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So this morning, I'm going to be asking a couple of missions organizations to represent to us. They're going to be our Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. We're going to see. I'm praying that we're going to have a bit of a different perspective now. We're going to see what God is doing through their missions groups and how you and I can be a part of it. So I want you to, I invite you to listen to them and let the Holy Spirit open your eyes. I'd like to first call on Dr. Winky uh, to share with us. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's, a, it's such a pleasure for me to be back here uh, in uh, Living Word NRA. Uh, to those who do not know me, I am Dr. Winky or Dr. Wealthy Villanueva, and I am the Executive Director of Heaven's Eyes Tribal Missions Incorporated. Uh, the video will be shown in a while. Uh, but uh, before I show the video, I'd like to uh, thank the church uh, for continually praying and supporting for our ministry uh, for the past uh, five years, days, right? For the past five years, uh, the young professionals of Living Word NRA has been helping us in conducting our family camps. And uh, thank you very much. And also the church. Um, a lot of the members of the church have been supporting also our ministry. And I know the church is praying for us. Uh, so, um, in, in, uh, uh, in line also with what Pastor Nick is uh, telling you, uh, Heaven's Eyes is also on a, a crossroad, actually, Pastor Nick. So, it's very apt. Your message is just very apt. Uh, we're also praying already. Uh, next year, uh, we're planning on visiting another tribe. Uh, and if it is the Lord's will, we're praying that we will be able to start a work there. Uh, the Batak tribe, by the way, by God's grace, glory to him, is already a rich tribe. So let's give glory to God for that. Um, we are now into discipling them so that they will also be able to disciple others as well. Uh, they are very passionate. The kids are very passionate in sharing the word of God. Uh, in fact, we had visitors from Dell, from the Dell company, uh, last July. They donated some computers to the kids. And with this very, very, uh, it's such a blessing because, you know, the kids made a, um, a cartolina with all their notes. And they were saying, uh, Salamat po, sana makilala nyo rin sa Jesus sa puso ninyo. So the kids right now also have a passion in sharing the gospel. And we're praying that our other students will be involved in missions as well. So please pray for us as we also pray to venture in another unreached people group. It's a very, far, very far place. Uh, we are praying to visit that um, on uh, summer. Uh, and um, it's going to be a challenge for us as well. We don't know why the Lord is leading us in another uh, but I know uh, God has a plan. So I'd like to show to you what the ministry is all about. Again, thank you for praying for us.
Mangsa samba sa iyo O Dios kami lahat magpupuri sa iyo O Hesus sa kabundukan manut kapatagan sa sambahin ka nang iyong linalang lahat ng tribo ay aawit sa iyo Panginoon lahat ng dila magsasabi na ikaw si Jesus lahat ng tuhod ay lulod sa iyong kadakilaan o Diyos ng katribuhan at ka Bayanan na sambahin ka ng walang katapusan. Sa sambahin ka ng walang katapusan. Jesus, Jesus. Good morning, brethren. Um, we would like to thank the congregation, Pastor Nick and the elders, uh, for inviting us here this morning to present to you Soul Movers Ministry. Uh, actually, we will be presenting, uh, giving information about the ministry for only five minutes. So uh, I will uh, focus on the main features of the mission work. Uh, first of all, uh, the objective of this uh, ministry, Soul Movers, is evangelism. And the very foundation of this mission work is character. So we have to tell everybody, especially for those who are intending and desiring to become a member of this ministry, uh, to uh, think about Jesus Christ and not themselves. Because, you know, uh, in the mission field, we expect something worse to happen not uh, uh, giving ourselves some uh, luxury in the mission field and all the mission work. Another thing, uh, our God is God of order. So we plan and uh, we um, meet for this mission. Uh, everything is planned. Um, we just go there, dasmag, dasmag ba? Because we don't want that the unbelievers will see us maglalis na dito, um, we complain, no? So, we will uh, this witness um, our testimony. So, lisod na. And uh, we have to remember that uh, this is not because of us. This is because of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, we go to the mission field expecting the worst to happen. At present, brethren, uh, the mission, uh, the, the Soul Movers Ministry has 36 regular members. We categorize our members into two uh, types. The regular member, for which we encourage and we require these people to attend uh, the mission. And we have four, an average four missions every year. So, um, we also uh, require them to give the monthly dues, okay? Uh, this is where our funds come from. And uh, the other uh, category member is the volunteers. These are the people, most of them are members of the medical and the paramedical and the nursing uh, staff that uh, we um, ask them to join us because of their uh, schedules. They cannot really join every medic medical missions that we have. So we just ask them to join because of exigency of the service. At present, we have 36 regular members. And good news for you, these people are 
in uh, 55 to 60 years old already. So uh, they are reaching already the degenerative stage. And by God's grace, some of them are cancer survivors. So we entice and we invite the young bloods, the young ones to join us. And we encourage, I see people, medical students, nursing students, even professionals in the medical field to join us. You know, this is not a joke. Uh, well, it's, it's good. Uh, it's a good thing for us to go in the mission field once. Traveling is very, very good, right? But traveling another, for another uh, two weeks of rest and then travel again, and then travel again for another two weeks. I think it is only by God's grace that we can stand firm on this. So please pray that uh, you may, you may, uh, you will desire and eventually have this uh, calling on your part. And uh, lastly, I will take this opportunity also that uh, uh, our members are here. They will give you uh, our uh, invitations, our uh, uh, registration form uh, after the service. I just want to quote this. Ministry members are not permanent. The only permanent thing is the word of God. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, in behalf of Dora Volt Ministry, headed by Pastora Jaji Maranga, we would like to extend our thanks for Living Word NRA, especially Pastor Nick, for giving us the privilege to be able to share what the Lord has been doing in us through the ministry. Um, Dora Volt derived its name from Hosea chapter 2, verse 15, where it says, There I will give her back her vineyards, and I will make the Valley of Accor a door of hope. The Valley of Accor, it's a place of destruction, a place of trouble, but God turned it into a door of hope. So that's why, that's where the ministry was given its name. Our vision is to provide, we are aspiring to provide a safe haven for women and their children and children within the body of Christ who are victims of, social, of sexual abuse. If you notice, um, we have underlined children within the body of Christ because we are um, an organization who wish to focus and help those victims within the church. We might be wondering, are there victims within the church? And I would say yes. Right now, the children that we are sheltering are all coming from the churches coming from Living Word itself. So our mission is to repair, rebuild, restore, and renew the broken lives, molding them and nurturing them, offering them hope through the Word of God in a safe environment, in a self-sustaining land. Actually, as we move to the next um, slide, um, this is the picture of, of the bigger, bigger vision that the Lord has given to us. Next slide, please. So we hope in the coming days that the Lord will provide us a, a land where we can put up a school, um, houses, farm, as well as a child protection unit. I know Dr. Mani is um, aware of this, that we only have one um, pink room where we process sexually abused cases. And because we only have one, so when you go there, you will be processing almost two weeks or even months. So it would take us time to finish processing the cases. So we are actually SEC registered and we are registered, licensed, and accredited by the Department of Social Welfare and Development. Right now, we have a house of refuge. We have a small place which can cater at least 12 individuals. And we have, um, right now, Eight people. Um, we are sheltering eight people, one mother and seven children. That's what I have mentioned earlier. We are helping women and their children 
and children. So there are only few organizations who are catering for both um, siblings. Typically, other organizations are just catering all girls and all boys, but we have seen it that it, it's much more better and it could help more for their growth if at least one of their parents is there because uh, mostly um, the perpetrators are fathers. So if they will all be broken, so the healing is very long. So as we help the children in the House of Refuge, we teach them and introduce to them um, livelihood programs. Our livelihood programs is uh, we have vermiculture. Um, it's a process where we use worms to decompose organic waste and produce um, organic fertilizer. We are also teaching them to know how to make virgin coconut oil. Uh, there we have samples at the back. Extracting um, uh, oil from the coconut in a natural way. So that's um, our product. Next slide, please. Um, actually, as what we have mentioned earlier, the, the bigger picture of the vision, it's still not yet realized, but we are moving forward there. We hope and we're asking for your prayers to keep us in prayer for the Lord to provide us a place because we wish to really provide um, the victims, the survivors with actually a, a village type, not a dormitory type for them to, to grow as a normal individual, like, not like a... They're just sleeping in one room. So that's, that's the bigger picture that we are looking forward to. And we are looking forward to for volunteers like lawyers, um, social workers, teachers. Because right now, our cases, we are only depending um, for our PAO lawyers. So cases are always canceled because there are no available lawyers. We are also praying for God to, to raise up more social workers, teachers, and other volunteers. So the work is big, and we know that our God is big also. May the Lord continue to bless the works of our hands. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Virgie of CBN Asia, or known as the 700 Club Asia. Um, we just celebrated our 25th anniversary last October 1. If you've uh, heard the news, uh, we had a concert in Araneta. So we praise God for that. And for the 25th uh, 25 years of His faithfulness uh, since CBN Asia is um, depending on our donors no, um, and God is continue sustain, uh, continually sustaining us. Um, I'm here to uh, share that CBN Asia has its family of ministries. Now, we know um, the 700 Club Asia, which is the show itself, um, it is... Um, we can watch it at Gem A7 every 12 midnight. Now, it's our own way of, um, some, uh, some people are asking why it's so late, why it's in 12 midnight, not on a prime time. But um, we're thinking that God has really a purpose because most problem, uh, problematic people are, are those who can't sleep. <laughs> so they can watch the show. Be inspired of the testimonies of the people, how God moved in their lives. Also, we have Super Book. It is produced by CBN for your kids, not to minister with them. We also have ACM, Asia Center for Mission. Uh, we have an office here in Mandawe and in the I building. Uh, they are sending, um, they trained and sent missionaries. We also have Operation Blessing. Uh, there are humanitarian arm. Um, if we have like uh, what happened in Marawi, um, in Yolanda, uh, they do for like they gives relief goods, counseling, prayer for them. And for me, I'll be representing prayer center. We have prayer center here in Cebu. So if 
Um, you didn't know, you can call us um, if you need prayer concerns. Now, a prayer center or CBN itself, um, we have this um, proclaiming Christ, transforming lives. No, um, way for prayer center, uh, most of us or some of us cannot go to the mission field. Like we have a lot of alibis like, how about my family? I'm a mother, I'm a father, I'm working. But prayer center is open if, if you have four hours a week available. Um, you can go to our office at Bakayan. I know most of us have a lot of time doing Facebook. You can use that time to, to, to do the mission. Um, prayer center would do, uh, we receive calls, we do chats, and we do SMS or text. So be, we, ju I ju we just want to encourage you to be part of this mission because there's a lot of um, hurting people behind those doors in their room. No one is reaching out for them. Um, there's a lot of people who are willing to go to church when you invite them. But there are also a lot of people who are shy to be ministered. But they want to be prayed for. They want, to be, uh, they want someone to listen for them. They want someone to care for them. And um, that's, that's the thing that CBN Asia Prayer Center is doing here in Cebu. But the prayer center here in Cebu is not only reaching for Cebuanos. We're also reaching all over the Philippines and even all over the world. We have our OFWs who are hurting. They do chats. And that's, that's why if you want to be part, if you have four hours in your one week to give for CBN, feel free to come and talk with me after the service. Thank you so much and God bless everyone. Mayang buntag. Good morning. Luya man. Kapoy. So, I'll be sharing about our campus ministry. So, to start with, let me share a quote. As other people say that uh, the problem with our church today is that there are, there are very few players and a lot of sp spectators. And you know what, what spectators do? They're very good at analyzing and criticizing things in church. Diba? And then, in actual, but I'm not here to preach. Sorry, Pastor Nick. <laughs> so, I'm Stephen. I'm from the youth ministry. And I'm currently the ministry head of our Crosswalk Campus Movement. It's our student-led uh, church or church-based ministry for students. So, and... We're founded last 2015, so we started our uh, ministry last 2015. So that's a photo of our event at Makdo, uh, inviting students for free free food and going out with having Jesus with them. So, uh, and then our ministry presence is in different campuses. So that's uh, some of our campuses here in Cebu, and. Uh, those are uh, our huddles. We call we call our uh, weekly meetings huddles for students to just uh, hang out with us and, of course, get to know about Jesus. So our purpose statement uh, as a ministry, our purpose is to glorify God by passionately loving Jesus and making multiplying disciples. So our disciples, the disciples we make should not be, you know, uh, disciples that will stay, but multiplying ones. And... Uh, it's basically the great commandment, which is loving God, and the great commission, which is loving others. So it's grabi uh, align drasha sa inyong mission statement in church. Do you remember your mission statement in church? So diba? loving God, then fulfilling the great commission. So that's that's it. That's the Christian life, basically, great commission and uh, the great commandment. And our conviction as uh, a youth ministry is. Although not all youths go to church, di ba? At mga anak, mga apo, mga kaila, dili sila mo sa church. But all of them go to a campus. That's why we go to them and bring the church to them. And as what Pastor Edmund Chan would say, 
our best people should be in the youth ministry. Why? Because they are the next generation. So guys, uh, I would like to encourage the church to partner with us and serve with us because after all, it's not about our gatherings, but it's about our scatterings. It's not about our going and see, uh, coming and seeing, but it's about our you know, going and telling others about Jesus Christ. So uh, we, we will be at the back. And if you are a parent who wants, or if you are a student who wants to share to us new contacts, so you can write, write it down uh, later uh, under new contacts. And then if you are a student who wants to volunteer with us, help us out in sharing the gospel. So it's exciting, no? we share the gospel to students. So you can also write your name down and uh, write volunteer. And if you want to partner with us in any way possible by, uh, you know, giving us opportunities to share or giving us support, so you can also uh, write down your name under partner and we will reach to you and we'll see where God would lead us. Uh, let me end by saying that church, the great commission is not only God's assignment for us, but the great commission is also an indicator of our alignment to God. So if we don't fulfill the Great Commission, maybe we're no longer aligned to what God is calling us to do. And our relationship with God is no longer aligned to Him. So, yeah, thank you. Ayaw mo kaluya. Dagan kayong trabaho o no? Pero, sige lang. Not every need is a calling. So, I want you to pray about it and uh, just uh, ask God and go if the Lord tells you to. So, thank you kayo and good morning. Lumpini condo. Na ako sa fourth floor. Na may flowers sa taas. Oh, and na ada isilay ko andere. Spirit houses. Murang ing ani siya. Ko an. Spirit houses. Kay they do believe na ang spirit kay mag matu sa ilang house. So if dili sila magbutang ng spirit houses, kay mupuyo nila ang spirit. So what they do is. They make spirit houses for each building, and then they ra sila mag-offer, mag-pray kung sa ilang ganahan. Palit sa ako cappuccino. Sawari ka. Alright, so ano kung cappuccino coffee? Nalami ka ayo. Usually kay dere sa tni mo kaon. So on my way there now, a spirit house with elephants and all. See, they have. The drinks and all in there. So like drinks gonna offer. Okay, if you don't offer anything, the spirits will bother you. That's so same on house though. I have seven to eight students for tonight. So, I'll show you sa among curriculum. Ang akong class kay Advanced Conversation Class Level 6. Gihan ay na nina ang curriculum. This is the book that we're using. And so far, sa akong two days na pag-teach no, kay they seem to understand and they actually ask questions as well. Wow. 
วงานที่เราต้องทำมันมากจนเกินไป We feel inadequate for the task you gave us เรารู้สึกว่าทำไม่ไหว Hi Where are we? We're in Santi Santi Su Can you say Tawanika? No Thank you all for the missions uh, agencies who shared uh, this morning. That last video is, uh, I think all of you know Jai. Um, she's actually, uh, we have endorsed her trip there to Thailand. Um, it's a mixture of what we understand of using your gift, your talents, and going out somewhere else. And that's what she's doing. Jai has been uh, with us for the last four years at the, uh, as an administrator of the church. And she has this really important sense of calling into the missions. Early this year, Jai went and took a TESOL uh, um, what do you call it? accreditation course. And what they, what they actually do is there in Thailand is she teaches uh, in a class and they use the scriptures to teach the class. And so today you have seen quite a lot uh, of varied um, varied examples of the different kinds of missions. We had uh, um, the tribal missions, we had uh, medical missions, um, the CBN uh, um, prayer center, which is actually not just a prayer center, but it's uh, where a lot of uh, depressed people, they call and they give counsel. And we have Door of Hope um, uh, for sexually abused, uh, and we have the campus ministry. And uh, we thank the Lord for uh, all of you that, uh, that God is using you. I just want to remind the church um, that uh, as we go, as we go to live the mission of God in our lives, I, I like what Stephen said, not every call is a mission. But somehow I'm praying that as we have been doing this for the last four weeks, that the Lord will stir up our hearts that we will be reminded that we are not to just be sitting comfortably on our chairs, that we have been called to a mission. My prayer is that we will not just be that kind of a church who are coming every Sunday and, you know, nagpatambok ta sa word of God, but that we are a church that goes. Going, making disciples of all nations. Let's uh, please stand up for a short word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much for what you have done today. Thank you for opening our eyes. Thank you for the missions groups who have come to represent their teams. Thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes. Now I'm praying, Father God, that your Holy Spirit uh, we'll begin to just allow us to understand that we are not just here, but we are part of a bigger work. And Lord, may your Holy Spirit, Jesus, may your Holy Spirit work in the midst of your church. Allow us to see a bigger perspective. Allow us to have that understanding of your call. Allow us, Lord God, not just to see but to go as well. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may now take your seats. This morning, we're going to be um, celebrating the Lord's Supper. And I'd like to remind everybody that the Lord's Supper is a, um, is a celebration for the saved. And so I'd like to call our, uh, what do you call this, our servers to please come forward and distribute the elements uh, and let's all uh, prepare our hearts and let's sing one song in preparation for uh, communion let's all stand up please praise the Stronger than 